again. Yeah, so welcome, welcome to my uh, podcast, uh, Biohacking Life Hacks. I'm a, I'm a biohacker and uh, I love, you know, hacking life, uh, hacking my body, my brain, uh, age, everything. So, and by hacking, and what I mean is optimizing. So I'm, I'm massively into optimizing everything I do. And, uh, you know, so for me, it's like uh, my purpose seems to be in life is to, to optimize things. So I'm, I'm interested in other people because I, I can't be just me. So other people will have their own life hack, their own ways of optimizing whatever they do. And so I'm interviewing all these people, amazing people, uh, to find out what their life hacks are so that I can integrate and other people can integrate into their lives. We don't, then that information isn't lost uh, into the ether. Uh, so today I have uh, Tim Kelly um, from Arizona, uh, Phoenix. So Tim, Tim, uh, so Tim, tell me, um, tell me about Tim Kelly. Who is Tim Kelly, please? Well, like you, I am definitely seeking the optimal in life. I founded a website for Polytope Press. And it focuses on achieve, attaining the optimal in all aspects of civilization. Those include health and fitness, as well as science and technology. And in all cases, I would say a theme runs through a lot of my work. And that theme is harmony with nature. I noticed that there are many people who have goals in life. And there are different paths that you can pursue in accomplishing those goals. But what I've learned is that the advice of the late, great Victor Schauberger is of great importance. And that advice was comprehend and imitate nature. There are so many times through history where people become arrogant and they think that some theory that they've come up with is better than nature. But what I'm learning is that hardly anyone knows nature well enough to state that you can do it better. And when I learn, especially in relation to health and fitness, how nature works, nothing man has done has ever outdone what nature has done. All we had to do was just humbly receive the lessons that were available in nature. And then if we do that, we can become healthy and fit and we can have a capable civilization. So in uh, a brief nutshell, that's what I'm about. Excellent. And and what is your um, you know background in terms of uh, wh where do you come from? What did you do before, and what brought you to this point? Well, ever since I was a little kid, I knew that I loved to write, and so what I wanted to do more than anything was to write. And at first, I thought it might only be fiction as opposed to nonfiction, but as time went by, I just saw the need to get more nonfiction out there and. In relation to health, in the course of doing research, for even when you write fiction, you still have to do a great deal of research in nonfiction if you want your fiction to sound plausible. So when I was doing that research, I started researching global corruption. And when I was researching that, I came across this book, Suppressed Inventions and Other Discoveries by Jonathan Eisen. And in that case, he was not so much an author as he was a compiler, and he compiled articles that were originally published in Nexus Magazine out of Australia. There was a section of that book that was devoted to health, and when I read through the health section, I learned of a great many amazing ideas in health. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going to have to investigate this and see if these ideas are legitimate. So I did, and I found that every author was accurate. And after I learned that, I thought to myself, okay, so from here, what other innovators have been suppressed? So I started stockpiling all the innovators who had been suppressed. And after I did that, I thought to myself, well, this is something that the world needs to know. They need to see all of these innovators together. So I put all of their work together in one book, and eventually that led to a new paradigm of health. And as incidents would have it, number of people around me would get sick with different things and I would say, hey, you know, I have this information, we can try it. And everyone I helped succeeded insofar as they followed the rules of nature. There are some people 
who are not open to completely following the rules of nature, so they partly follow them, they succeed insofar as they stick with nature. Some people are very closed. I, I've had people that I've met who will say, well, there's no way I want to change what I eat. And they're in a, a very serious situation and they die. I, I, it's just an unfortunate truth. I wish that they wouldn't die. I wish they would listen, but everyone's free to choose their own path. And what I try to do is clarify the choices that people are making so that you are making informed decisions with your health and your fitness. So again, that's a little bit more of my background. Mm -hmm. I, I totally um, re relate to that because I, I'm a health coach. And uh, one of my friends, a very dear friend of mine, he's got diabetes, he's got neuropathy, he's got high blood pressure. Do you know, like, he takes like 20 tablets a day. I mean, I've been to his flat and uh, you wouldn't believe the, uh, the amount of tablets. And he's in pain all the time. Um, he, like, he has hospital visits every month. Do you know, like, mm -hmm. it, and you wouldn't believe the junk he eats like i i'm i'm horrified every time i see his meals and i'm like you know you can't eat that you know the, the reason you're going having to go to hospital you know i point these out to him you know and still <laughs> he says well this is this is what i eat you know and i yeah. like no matter what i did i couldn't i couldn't change him like i, I, I think it was last week we we were going somewhere. He was driving, and you know, and he went, "Oh, should we stop for breakfast?" I said, "Yeah, sure, let's stop for breakfast." And he said, oh, uh, "Where do you want to eat?" I said, "Well, wherever you want to eat. Uh, I'm I'm fasting today." <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. so we we went into this cafe. It looked like a posh cafe, you know. And mm -hmm. I looked at the menu, and I was like, "Whoa, I'm not eating here." So I I just said, "I'm fasting." I, I'm brown, so what I do is I say, "I'm fasting fasting for religious reasons." You know, and yes. um, and that works because nobody will question that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a great get out clause. Um, and but and he ordered. Oh my God, he ordered pancakes with maple syrup. Uh, it came with um, you know the dried like a jams. Um, yes. And and then there was a, and then there was like a, a coffee, and then he put like two or three tablespoons of sugar in it. And, and he mm -hmm. sat opposite me, and his plate was just literally full of sugar. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, okay, all right, just there's nothing you can do about this. And he and he just ate it all up. And I was like, man, you know that like, that is the reason you're <laughs> you're ill. Um, but he loves his food, he, the, the, and he won't change. Like that, that I, there's nothing I could say on this planet. That would get him not to eat sugar, great junk food, you know. But what, like, I don't know what to do, you know. Like, so I just have to accept that he's not going to change. That he's just going to right. Die. Everyone's everyone's on their own path, and some people are going to choose to be healthy, and others are not. And you know, oh, gradually, I just got to a point where I realized, you know, it's really not my place to choose the life path of another person. But we do want other people to be healthy because we're in a society and. If the rest of society breaks down, that does affect us. So we have a vested interest in trying to promote the positive. And of course, you never want to see someone suffer. So, I mean, you'd prefer that they'd not be in pain. And so you, you reach out. But again, you just have to uh, acknowledge your limitations. Yeah, that, that was a hard lesson for me to learn. <laughs> like a really hard because I, I would get angry. I would get annoyed. I'd be like, what the hell? And get angry. Uh, do you know, and like my ex-wife, I'm not, I'm not married anymore. Mm -hmm. She would eat the worst foods possible, and I'd just be in shock. You know, like I'm like, mm -hmm. what the hell? Uh, and I, and I, it took, especially if it's your wife, you know, yes. eating eating rubbish right in front of you. You know, and like, how do you detach yourself from that? So it just took, like, eventually, you know, we separated, but, mm -hmm. um, but it was just. It's so emotional, you know, like, and, it, and, and I find it personally, for me, I find it hard, especially if it's somebody close to me, to not to say anything, you know, to go, oh, no, it's just it's their path. Uh, it's the way they are, you know, like, it's, yeah, just hard. But 
that's what I'd like to learn from you is how to let go that it's their path. Let them get, let them, uh, let them poison themselves, you know? It's, uh, yes, it, it is unfortunate because in the food, of course, does affect the mind as well. And so exactly. that's one of the uh, other caveats that you have, because when you're in a relationship, you want to be able to relate to someone mentally. And if the food is affecting the mind, that's going to be arguments. It's going to be a, a lack of enjoyment. There's going to be a lack of growth because, you know, we do want to grow. We want new stimulation. We want our lives to keep getting better. And if your concepts are rutted and stuck, then you're not going to feel better. You're going to have headaches. You're going to be angry. You're going to be irritable. And that's going to affect, you know, the relationships that you have around you. And if you want positive energy, you have to make the choice to not only be positive yourself, but to seek the positive around you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's hard. So, so um, how do you, how do, how does Tim Kelly define success? What is success? Well, there was a book I was reading in grade school. I, I sometimes uh, shock the other kids by some of the books that I read when I was in grade school, but one of them was called You Can Succeed, and it was written by Eric Jensen. I still remember that book quite well. And in the beginning, he had his own definition of success, which kind of resonated with me. He said, success is a gut level feeling of pride and accomplishment. So that was not the message that I was being told from most of the adults who were around me at the time. They were telling me success was when you're rich. And so when I saw those conflicting definitions of success, I thought to myself, okay, so what, what do I believe? And what I believed more than any other thing, you know, I would hear a lot when I was in grade school about potential. You know, people would look at me and they'd say, you have all this potential. And for them, if I fulfilled my potential, that would mean that I was rich. But for me, fulfilling my potential meant that I had truly taken all of my abilities and developed them to their utmost. And I think with health, you understand that you're successful at health if you're free of disease. So in my case, I can say the following. I have never had a disease. I have never had any allergies. And for the last 14 years, I have not had the common cold. Now, I don't know how many doctors there are on planet Earth who can match me in relation to that, but I would call that success. In relation to fitness, I had fitness goals and I've accomplished those to a very significant extent, still a little short of where I would like to be, but I'm making more progress towards them the right way than I've seen from anyone else. And then in relation to the other aspects of writing, I do feel when I look at it, my writing that I've carried my abilities to their utmost and the work is, as I would describe it, fulfilling. Because that was the thing for me. I, I would often think of death. It was just a strange thing, I guess. Maybe we all think about death from time to time. But when I was a kid and I saw other people around me dying, which is just not necessarily unusual. I mean, people die. But when death occurs, you start thinking to yourself, okay, so what do I want to think about myself in relation to my own death? You know, How do I want to feel the moment before I die? And when I thought about it, I thought to myself, well, I don't want to be rich and miserable. Uh, I want to look back and feel that I did every last thing I could to develop myself. So for me, it was about spiritual growth. And as I look back on, you know, some people around me who pursued wealth or something like that, it's just interesting watching some of the decisions that they'll make. They'll kill themselves earning tons of money. And then when they get sick, all that money that they saved up just goes right down the drain. And they're not much better, and they're not necessarily that happy. And if you read the biographies, as I have, I read a lot of biographies when I was a kid, there are people who are very famous, and they're very rich, and they're extremely miserable. And they hurt a lot of people. And I don't want to look at my life that way. I, I want to view my life, even if it isn't the richest life that's out there as one that helped people and it was truthful. And so for me, those are key components of success, being truthful, helping people 
and doing the best I can to fulfill the abilities that I have. Mm, what was the, uh, you know, you mentioned you wrote some biographies. What were the, what was the one or the two that stood out for you? Wow. There are so many different biographies, but, uh, when I read about the life of R. Buckminster Fuller, uh, that was a, a very interesting one. He's the guy who created the geodesic dome and it was his work in geometry, which helped me to create a three-dimensional periodic table of the elements. So that was a, a pretty exciting time. And when I look back at his life, I saw someone who was, again, trying to help the world every way that he knew how. He was trying to develop new cars, new housing uh, with the geodesic domes, everything that he could do. And then when he was uh, at 32 years old in 1927, he became suicidal because he was trying to help in so many ways and was getting no support. And he was getting a lot of sabotage, a lot of ridicule, but he kept going. And if he didn't, then I wouldn't have been able to develop my three-dimensional periodic table of the elements. So uh, a life like that is, of course, uh, of great significance. And of course, there's Nikola Tesla. Uh, I, I read a lot of uh, stories about what he had done. And when you hear him in his own words give lectures, it's very humble. It's extremely intelligent and it honors nature every step of the way. You know, he, he just learned from nature how it worked and he succeeded in ways that probably no other human being had ever done. And I mentioned before, uh, Victor Schauberger, he was a, a forester, uh, who did a lot of work, just spending a lot of time deep in the woods and studying how water flowed in streams. And then out of that, became the flume, which was uh, used in society to take logs down mountains with a three-dimensional water spiral flow he learned from nature. And then he developed free energy devices, which unfortunately are still suppressed to this day. So those are a few of the biographies. Of course, there's many more in relation to health, but those are a few that stand out. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been meaning to study Tesla. I just haven't got around to it. Um, but you've given me renewed hope to, uh, or enthusiasm to uh, go out and study him. Um, so, so what, what are your um, biohacks? I'd be interested in your biohacks in terms of health. What, what have you got on that? Right. Well, of course, I've written a book, Natural Healing Self-Empowerment. It lays out everything that I know uh, yeah. as, as much as I can, and I constantly update it. But again, this gets back to the theme of working in harmony with nature. So I would say there's an evidence chain that is forged in steel. It began with Weston Price, who wrote Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. And it goes into Francis Pottinger, who wrote Pottinger's Cats. Then Dr. Edward Howell, who wrote Food Enzymes for Health and Longevity, and continues through Max Gerson. So in each of these cases, what we're looking at are people who learn that if you just eat the natural foods, then you're fine. And there are varieties because there's a variety of human beings that are living in different types of geography. One group might be living close to the ocean, so they eat a lot of seafood. Someone else could be living inland, so they eat different things than seafood. There are some people who eat fruits and vegetables, but basically what this settles into are ideas along the following lines. You know, Dr. Joel Wallach uh, over here in the United States talked about 92 nutrients. And if you take in those 92 nutrients in the right amounts and forms, this is proteins, carbs, and fats, along with enzymes, vitamins, and minerals, and you take that in in a water-rich, probiotic-rich, and oxygen-rich environment where you're intaking 80% alkalizing food as opposed to 20% acidifying food, and have ideal flow in the body, then you can have ideal health. So let me talk about flow because flow is uh, the essence of the health paradigm that I developed. What I noticed over time was that many health problems are the result of obstructions. So the way to help is to rid yourself of all of these obstructions. So some easy examples would include an obstruction in the intestines. So you don't want to have an obstruction in the intestines. You want that to be completely flowing three 
all the way through from the front end to the back end should be completely clear in your digestive tract. The liver should be completely free of obstructions because when it's not, it could have gallstones or liver bile duct obstructions. And that's also an easy fix. You just do a liver cleanse and you can clean that out. The kidneys, the kidneys can be blocked with kidney stones. To prevent that, you make sure that you're intaking the right kinds of fluids, ones that are likely not to form crystals in the kidneys, and you intake the right amount of water. So let's talk about water just for a moment. Um, I, my English system might not translate as well over there, but it's going to be half as many ounces as pounds lean body weight per day. So you want to intake that much water. It's very important. And you also want to get quality water. I'll talk about the quality of the water uh, just for a moment. When we're taught pH, we're taught that water is seven in the scale. That is not accurate. If you want to test the pH of water, you need to get distilled water and check its pH. And when you do that, you will not get seven. You will get something in the fives. This is because most water is actually acidic. So it's only natural water that you get out of a river stream that is going to have that balance at seven. You need to intake water that is rich in minerals, specifically calcium and magnesium, that will help a lot, and keep your kidneys free of, free of obstructions. The lungs can be kept free of obstructions by making sure that your iron levels are good. This will give you high quality blood. And the lymph, uh, the body has a lymphatic system. It's not necessarily talked about a whole heck of a lot with a lot of people in health. That's unfortunate. There's a pioneer by the name of C. Samuel West who wrote a book called Golden 7 Plus 1. He talks about cleaning the lymph. A lot of that gets down to simple exercise. This is because the major lymph nodes are located in the armpit and the groin. And when you move, which is what you're supposed to do, you're not supposed to be a couch potato, you get the lymph to move and your body's waste is removed. So then there are obstructions in skin. And then I also talk about seven major pathways of the flow through the body. And these are ether slash life force. I know that sounds a little exotic, but it is real and it is practical. Electricity, magnetism, blood, lymph, oxygen, and water. And if we can have complete flow through the system, and again, there are details for how to do all of this that are in my book, then we can have ideal health. So those would be some initial thoughts on my major hacks. So in that, that's really good. But is there like a, three concrete things people could do uh, on a daily basis that would improve their health? Do you know like three simple things? Okay, sure. Okay, so let's talk about enzymes. Um, when people eat processed foods, one of the biggest problems is that they're not fully digesting their food. So one easy solution is to take digestive enzymes. So Quick story on that. I always tell this story because I love this story. Um, the digestive enzymes that I used over here are called Super Papaya Enzyme Plus uh, from American Family Health. So these enzymes will help you digest your food. Now, there was a kid over here who had his blood sugar at 1,500. Uh, I'm not misspeaking. That's a really high blood sugar. It's like verge yeah. of death blood sugar. Mm. And... He went to the conventional doctors. They were completely unable to get his blood sugar stabilized. So it happened coincidentally that the information I had just researched on enzymes filtered through one person to another to this little kid. And he ended up going on super papaya enzymes. His blood sugar was stabilized in one week. Now, kids recover faster than adults do, but you do want to make sure that you are taking digestive enzymes to make sure that your food is fully digested. And in Howell's work, he talked about the relationship between what he called the enzyme potential and the lifespan. And he was dead on target as far as I'm concerned. So basically what he's talking about there is the cleanliness of the blood. Because if you want to be healthy, there's two primary things you have to do to make your cells live forever. Those two things are one, you have to give them complete nutrition, and two, you have to remove their waste. So enzymes are a large part of that because when you completely digest your food, then your blood is clean and then you're going to be healthy. So in relation to cleaning the blood, here's another very simple one that people can look up. It's called the salt water flush. What this does is cleanses the digestive tract. 
And it works in the following way. You have two level teaspoons of sea salt taken in one quart of warm water first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Get the whole thing down in a half hour. Now, I don't recommend that you be out and about that day. Uh, you're going to need the bathroom and you're going to need it urgently. Uh, and there are sometimes what I call aftershocks, which is like several hours later, you may feel a sudden urge to release something else. But that cleanses the digestive tract. And of the six pathways for the system that I mentioned, the intestines are number one. That's the first thing to clear. Um, another very simple hack I'll give you is my number three is that the number one error that I see with minerals is too little potassium. So generally what will happen there is that, it, at least here with some of the statistics that have been gathered, 98% of the population is too low in potassium. This is a major problem. When Max Gerson did his work that was carried on by his daughter, Charlotte, and it's available to everyone in the Gerson therapy book that she wrote, she talked about the number one problem she saw was that people had too high levels of sodium in relation to potassium. Now, potassium is really high in a lot of natural foods, but unfortunately, when people eat a lot of processed foods, those are jacked up with refined salt. So they're getting way too much sodium in relation to potassium. So what this does is it accumulates water outside the cell and potassium is not getting inside the cell. And that is very, very important. We have to get the potassium inside the cell so that it can pull water inside the cell and promote the protein synthesis of enzymes and the rest of the catalysts that are needed to help the body thrive. So those would be three important ones. Nice. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. In yoga, we also have a salt water flush, uh, but we do it like uh, we're supposed to do it about every three months. Um, but yeah, you take a couple of hours out, you be at home near the toilet, <laughs> and mm -hmm. and we drink like uh, I think it's two pints of water mm -hmm. uh, or two liters. I can't remember what it is now. And uh, yeah, and then we do some yoga uh, until you know the bowel movements come. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's, it's yeah it's uh and yeah i agree with the uh electrolytes yeah um i i, I add potassium to my salt so yes. i get the uh the xca yeah, yeah, no, I, I like that it's really good um in, in terms of um so so in terms of life what are your life hacks you know life hacks okay so um i will mention this um at my website, there's a technology section, and mm -hmm. in the technology section, there is there are articles. Um, there's one on the technology of paradise. The second is on the template economy. So if you go through that, you'll see a lot of fantastic ideas for how to become more independent and uh, do a lot of things with tremendous efficiency. So one of the biggest of all of them is learning to work with rock dust. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about rock dust. So the pioneer in this case is a man by the name of Julius Hensel. So he discovered something of extreme importance to humanity that was unfortunately buried. This was in the late 1800s. So what he discovered was that if you take a rock and you smash it to powder and you put the rock into the soil, the plant will grow with tremendous growth and it will not require industrial fertilizers, and it will not be attacked by pests. It will be yielding fruit and vegetables that tastes fantastic in larger amounts. Uh, the fruit will be bigger. It will be more abundant. The plant will survive longer into winter than it otherwise would. Um, there are ideas all over the website, or especially in this article, on the template economy for how to get greater independence. Uh, I'll just mention some of the ideas and people can hopefully go and read further at the website. But imagine with water. I mean, we have problems all over planet Earth with people not getting enough water. But it is apparently possible to condense water vapor out of the air so that you would not need to be dependent on absolutely anyone. And several people have done this. I have 
links to someone who's done this in Canada, someone who's done this in South Africa. Uh, I have more footage from somebody else who has done this here in the United States in an industrial type way. It's like a long truck and he's condensing like thousands of gallons at well, one the, time. There's a beetle in the, in the, in the, in the, in the desert that uh, does it. Yes. I mean, all of these things are, are possible so that we can have, you know, water of the quality that we want and not have to be afraid that we're going to run out of that water. And of course, we want to mineralize that water as well. So uh, there are those sections in there. And if I get more support, I will try to release more things to the world for the production of rock dust. And probably with some things along the lines of free energy and heating and cooling systems. But all of that stuff is kind of uh, listed at the website. So I encourage people to visit and read those articles because a lot of the information is just provided for free and you can follow the links to verify where it's coming from. Mm, okay, that's good. And and and, and what, what do you, you know, in terms of your own life on a daily basis, what kind of practices do you have for yourself? Um, well, of course, I practice my own fitness system and uh, I do try to eat as close as I can in harmony with nature and then have the digestive enzymes whenever I'm having something that's a little bit different. And then I protect myself oftentimes by making sure that my detox is at a high level. Uh, sometimes it's just something as simple as consuming organic coconut oil after every meal. Uh, just I find that that's an excellent practice uh, to stay in shape. And then, of course, I'm constantly researching to learn more. Um, I, at my website, I have a book called Hidden History of Humanity. Uh, it's been taking up a lot of my uh, time and energy because I've learned so many things about the sweep of history from Atlantis to the present. And there is a great deal to learn. Uh, I'll just mention very quickly um, the idea of the calcareans, which I posited. So the calcareans uh, is a term I use to reference people who lived close to limestone. That may sound strange, but limestone can actually give you a lot of freedom. Um, it, you can use limestone to improve the quality of the soil where you grow food. It can improve the quality of your water because it produces calcium and magnesium bicarbonate, which alkalizes the water and makes you live longer. It can provide mortar. It can provide bricks. Yeah. It can provide. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So you mentioned the coconut oil. Yeah. I, I use coconut oil a lot. Do, 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 can you tell me the, the why in the background, you know, like why do you. Why do we add coconut oil so much? I am very observant. So all day long when I'm eating, I'm looking to see how my body's reacting to everything that I'm doing. So there came a time in the research where I became aware of coconut oil. Uh, there was a book called The Healing Miracles of Coconut Oil by Bruce Fife. And I read that book. Uh, part of the stories that are in there include an individual who apparently completely cured themselves of AIDS by consuming coconut oil. But I gradually learned that coconut oil is part of a complete detox plan that I developed. So uh, what I was learning when I first started, I started seeing, for example, that garlic was very powerful uh, to help the immune defense system. And then when I started working with it, I started noticing, oh, there were certain microbes that could get around working with, with garlic. So then I started thinking, okay, what else is out there? So then I added coconut oil, and then I got a little healthier. Then I added in olive leaf extract, and I got a little bit healthier. And then I added in black pepper, organic, and got a little healthier. So what I found was that this full-spectrum attack uh, to protect your system it's a very powerful thing. Uh, one of the things that can happen in the body, and this is uh, became very huge for me in my health research, was the development of anemia. So anemia is not a disease. It's just a condition of low red blood cells. Um, but it sets the stage for things to get much worse. And just about every human being on the planet will go through some kind of anemia. I mean, it's just kind of a classic thing as people get older, that their iron levels will drop. But what I found was that there was much more to the story than what I had been led to believe. Initially, if you look into anemia, you'll usually see something along the lines of 
well, people were either low in iron or in B vitamins, but that's just part of the story. Uh, there's a lot more going on. And one of the big things that goes on is that as your biome or your microbial colony, of which every human being has a microbial colony, as it shifts towards the negative, your iron is getting stolen on a daily basis by these microbes. They love iron. Uh, they've done experiments with these microbes and they'll feed them this mineral and that mineral. And they will just ignore every mineral. And then the second they see iron, they grab it. So as we get older, the microbe colony can shift towards the negative and it will be stealing all the iron that goes into your system. So for any number of people, they came up with this idea of, oh, well, if they're stealing it, let's just give people more iron. Well, Unfortunately, that didn't work because what would happen is people would take more iron and then the iron would just be stolen again. You know, so they were, their problems would actually get worse. So there was a experiment I became aware of very early on in my research of detox. So one person decided to do detox. The other person, to, both people had anemia. Uh, the other person decided to take higher levels of iron. And then after that process was done, they checked the results. And the results were the person who took more iron had less iron in their system. And the person who detoxified had more iron in their system. But that makes perfect sense in light of what I was just saying, which is when you detox your system, you get rid of negative microbes, you create a positive environment. And that also leads me to one of the most important concepts in health as well, which is Western medicine for a long time has been working with Louis Pasteur's germ theory of disease. But he had a rival in France, Antoine Béchamp. And Béchamp offered us a completely different theory of disease. And my research backs Béchamp and does not back Pasteur. Béchamp's theory is called the terrain theory of disease. In other words, you're not getting sick because of little bugs. You're getting sick because you're creating the wrong environment. And it is so clear from everything that I've looked at in my research that Béchamp was absolutely correct. It gets even deeper than that and goes into, you know, you were mentioning in our pre-conversation about mysticism. In some ways, it does get into a mystical realm because it's as if health and disease are being summoned into being. Now, I know that I'm not the first person to say that, but I mean, this is something that can be talked about in practical ways, thanks to the work of Béchamp. So let's talk about a macrophage, for example. In the human immune defense system, there is this uh, structure called a macrophage that goes around defending you inside your body. Okay, well, as many people who may have heard that before, did you know that macrophages oftentimes are not? present all the time, they actually begin as a secondary structure that is called a monocyte. So what happens? If you provoke your system by creating the wrong terrain, monocytes go through the transformation process to become a macrophage. So you've summoned your immune defense system into being. Now, what Béchamp also saw and this is one of the most shocking things I've ever heard in science. So I haven't seen this personally, but I have reason to believe that he's probably accurate. He saw a red blood cell transform into a bacterium. Now, again, as someone with a strong science background, that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. But basically, it transformed when the terrain became very negative. So you basically summoned your pathology into being. And you do that a lot of times by changing your pH. And one of the things that I noticed in relation to pH is that pH is one of the most fundamental ideas that there is. Uh, Gary Tumsky wrote a book called The Battle for Health is Over pH. But it's just so fascinating to look at the spiritual component that is underlying pH. If you eat too much meat, for example, and of course, you're not going to be eating a lot of meat unless an animal is slain for you to be eating that meat. Um, if you do that excessively, you become sick. Isn't that interesting? Whereas opposed with the fruits and the vegetables, which alkalize your system, you create a positive terrain 
and then the disease tends to leave you alone. If you choose to destroy yourself various ways, let's say you consume too much alcohol, for example, you're going to create a negative train and therefore you're going to invite disease. So all these different things keep leading you back to that same place where you summon the disease into being through either ignorance or intent. Either you go through life with this attitude of, well, I don't care if I destroy myself with refined sugar or alcohol or salt or whatever it may be. Or if you say, I don't want to learn, I have no desire to learn how nature works. I'm just going to grab whatever's on my plate and just do whatever feels good for a second. And then, you know, maybe get headaches or lose a limb or whatever it takes later on. Uh, you can have that approach to life, but you're not going to be learning. You're not going to be growing, you're probably not going to be a happy person. These are the kinds of choices that you can make. And that's what I found uh, was underlying everything were these choices and the sad part of it for me, especially after, after having developed this three-dimensional periodic table of the elements and uh, a new theory on the origin of species, which springs from that called confirmation theory, is that nature is trying to teach you beautiful, elegant patterns every step of the way. So why turn away from that? Why would you not want to be happy learning those patterns? Because just seeing the patterns makes you see that there is a music, literally, underlying all of nature. Why would you not want to be a part of that? So that's what I try to do is articulate this in a way that people can appreciate it and hopefully they can have better lives because of it. Mm. I like that. Uh, the, you mentioned coconut oil as a detox. In, in Ayurveda, they do this seven-day treatment um where you just consume pure 100 percent fat uh, which could be ghee or coconut oil yes uh, and what that does it, it rebuilds your your internals and it also removes all like heavy metals and all kinds of stuff um and they looked at what happens in the body you know when uh, you just eat pure fat mm -hmm. it turns out there's some um some programs in your dna which in the presence of, um, of pure fat in your diet, where there's no carbs, no proteins, uh, it turns on all these mechanisms in the cells uh, for healing. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. I know that for many people, they view fat as an enemy, and it's a, a big mistake. I mean, it's not that fat is an enemy. You just want to get the fat in the right form. You don't want to have trans fat. You don't want to have hydrogenated fat. Hydrogenated fat was put into foods because it extended the shelf life of products in the grocery stores. That's why yeah. it's there. That's it, right. It's hard for you to digest. Mm. But especially with coconut, coconut is consisting of what are called medium chain fatty acids, which yeah. mean that it's very easy for those to be broken down. And that is of great benefit to the body. Now, of course, the cell membranes uh, which are very important, are built of fat. And of course, our brains have a, what's called a myelin sheet insulation around the, the brain nerve cells. And you can watch those deteriorate if you don't get enough fat. Your joints can be destroyed if you don't have enough fat. Fat helps your minerals and your nutrients absorb during a meal. So you're going to get better health benefits from that. But again, it, it's as with everything, you know, the Greeks used to say, made in organ, which is translates into nothing in excess. So uh, a lot of times in life, it's not so much that a given thing is good or bad. It's the right amount. You know, you want to get just the right amount and have that strike that balance with everything with proteins. There are people who get all excited. I'm going to have tons of protein and I'm going to be fine. No, it probably gets a lot of damage. Uh, the research in animal breeders showed that if you intake more than 11% protein in a meal, you're at risk for uric acid crystal formation, and eventually that could put you into the so-called disease of kings, which is gout, mm. because you're not able to digest that much protein at once. So uncontrolled protein isn't good. It's going to damage your intestines. It's going to damage your liver and your kidneys. Uh, so all of these things are illustrative of getting the right things in the right form and the right amounts, and you will succeed. Yeah. Well, one of the things as, as a health coach I keep coming across is there isn't enough fat or good fat in people's diet because they're afraid of it. 
you know, they're afraid of fat. Um, so they deliberately, you know, try to remove fat from their diet. Uh, but like you said, you know, fat is essential. It's just needed for everything. And so one of the problems I find is people are deficient in good quality fats, but, you know, they get loads of, like you're saying, uh, vegetable oils and things like that into their diet, and margarine and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I had one client who was eating a lot of margarine because it was a healthier... <laughs> Like, Supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had to like, okay, I had to sit him down. Because he was buying anything that said um was it vegan friendly or something or plant based or something like that. Yes. And it, it was just I think it was like sunflower or palm oil or something, mm -hmm. which had just been mixed into to make it look like um margarine, you know. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, fair enough. You know, but that so one of the things I'm always having to decondition people is to eat fat, <laughs> you know, because they're just not getting enough of it. And, uh, yeah, just, um, yeah. And, and have you heard of Bruce Lipton? Uh, that name sounds somewhat familiar. He talks about the, what you talked about, the germ thing, uh, the, in that um, he talks about your consciousness and the way you treat your body and everything it decides what DNA gets activated and what how it gets activated. So mm -hmm. you have you have complete control over what gets activated in your body, um, and it's not the other way around. It's not the DNA or whatever the genes that are controlling you. It's you're controlling the genes. Well, there are researchers out there. Uh, granted, they their work has not been acknowledged or or fully accepted, but. Um, three of the, the greatest pioneers would be Royal Raymond Reif, uh, Willem Reich, and yeah. uh, others who have, uh, like Gaston Nassens, has probably done the most outstanding work in this regard. And he's identified structures. These, they go by different names. Bechamp initially called them microzymus. Uh, later on, Nassens would call them somatids. Reich would call them bions. These structures were incredibly tiny like viruses and bacteria, but they were pleomorphic, which meant that they actually changed their shape. When and you could actually see this on film, Nascent has film of them changing shape, and they were discovered to be more fundamental than DNA. As proof of this, he actually extracted these small structures and transferred them from one rabbit to another rabbit. So uh, a rabbit that had light fur grew dark fur not from transferring DNA, but from transferring these small microorganisms. So these go through a cycle, a 16-stage cycle that was identified by Nassens, and it's only in the first three stages of that cycle where they're healthy, and that first three stages are characterized by all the things that make for strong health. That's plenty of water, plenty of minerals. Uh, I Not long ago, I came across a doctor, his name's uh, Dr. Tennant. He has a, he's an ophthalmologist, but he was talking about cell charge. And it was interesting in relation to pH, because basically what he was saying, you know, meshed so perfectly with other things I had learned, which is that you increase the cell charge. It, it's like storing energy in the, in the body, only when you have that right balance of electrolytes. And that's a large part of what it takes for us to be healthy. I guess Otto Warburg the Nobel Prize winner, he observes that cancer cannot persist in the presence of oxygen, something that I will insist he's dead on accurate. But exercise promotes uh, oxygen flow through the system and balances the pH, and it charges up the energy of the cells. And you do need fats as, as part of that charging process. So uh, yes, there's multiple ways where you can fill yourself with positive energy. Another thing in relation to uh, being in harmony with nature, there was a, a researcher out of Australia. He talked about the deterioration of mitochondrial DNA. And it was just interesting that uh, looking at the three things that would keep your mitochondrial DNA healthy. One was nutrition. That was the first most obvious thing. But then he said connecting to the earth and connecting to sunlight. Those are pretty simple things that anyone can do. I, I agree, yeah. I mean, um, as a biohacker, one of the things uh, I do, and I try to do, I don't succeed every day, 
is to connect to the earth for at least 30 minutes every day. Uh, like when I do yoga, I will do it on barefoot on grass. Um, Good. And uh, but unfortunately, I live in Britain, and the yes. weather the weather is not consistent here. You know. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> Oh, weather can change within hours, you know. Yes. You could wake up and it's sunny, it's 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 the sun, and you're going, wow, today's going to be a hot day. And an hour later, it's raining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love it. We love it. I mean, you know, it keeps us on our toes, to be honest. Yes. Um, so thank you very much. That was, that was really good. Is there any uh, last message you want to give um, my listeners? Like any, any, any last pearls of wisdom, do you know? Uh, also, what would be really good, what I wanted to know was, if you, if you, I don't know if you have kids, but if you had kids, what would you teach them? What would you want them to know? I do not have kids. I have not had the uh, good fortune of finding someone else who is interested in living in harmony with nature, as, as I would like to. But that would def- definitely be what I would teach them. I would teach them the way that nature works and that you're here to learn and appreciate the simple gifts that you are given to be humble before nature and learn her patterns. And as Schauberger said, comprehend and imitate nature to move forward. And the other piece of advice that he gave, which was just also spectacular, think an octave higher. I mean, it's just such a great piece of advice. So one of the other ideas along those lines that I often say is it's better to transcend than it is to fight. You know, when I was young, I looked at everything as a war and it, it, everything had to be a fought. I have to fight, I have to fight. But no, uh, later as I grew, I learned it's better just to transcend the situation so that you don't need to fight. So the primary piece of advice, always work in harmony with nature. I hope people visit my website at Polytope Press and look over all the different sections to find all the different ways that you can exist in harmony with nature. And if you do that, we can recreate this planet. We can have freedom from all disease. We can have fitness. We can have an economy that works for everybody where everyone has an independent homestead and everyone gets to do what they love to do. That's my mission, and I hope people will reach out. Mm. I, I, I do um, Tantra and Eastern mysticism, and Tantra is all about transcending. It's like there's no fighting. Uh, yes. Whatever situation you're in, it doesn't matter what it is, you can just evolve your way out of it. Yes. You know, what, all you got to do, so like any problem that we come across, and it's like, well, just evolve. Yes. If you, if you evolve high enough, then that problem at first looks like a, uh, like a mountain because you're at this level and it, the problem is here. Um, but if you keep evolving, it sort of eventually becomes a molehill. You just step over it. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Yes. Uh, Grow in knowledge and wisdom. Again, the patterns in nature are there. They're showing you the way. You just have to be open to it. And grow. And as we stated at the beginning, some people are going to be open to that growth process and some are not. Just let everyone choose their own path. That's it. Yes. And and it, it's the letting go. That's the especially if it's somebody close to you. It's uh yeah, that's that's my struggle. Uh thank you very much. And 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 uh, you mentioned your website. Uh I'll, I'll put the link to that underneath, obviously. Uh, but how else it, would uh, how else people can can people connect with you and why would one people want to connect to you? what would be the reason for them wanting to connect with you okay so i have uh of course my email address uh, polytope press at protonmail.com and it would just be to follow up with any of the questions that they may have in relation to the website and of course i'm looking to improve and grow myself so on at my website there's a recommended reading page so if you go over that material and you see something else that I should know that you think will help other people, let me know. And if you're working with the health research or the fitness research, or you've read Hidden History of Humanity and you have a comment or something that you would like to share, please reach out to me and let me know. And if you have any questions on anything, reach out again and let me know. I'll be here. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. That is um, a lot of what you said mirrors or echoes in my from my biohacking learning from my 
Eastern philosophies, Keshama Shaivism, Tantra, but you know, like Ayurveda, you know, all of those things. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna read up on the hidden histories of uh, mankind. You called it, but yeah, um, I might even do a, like um, a review of it. Sounds uh, fantastic. I'm just about to add in a few more pages in the next week. So uh, if you wait one more week, we'll have an even stronger edition than ever. So it should be pretty spectacular. Brilliant. All right, I'll, I will do that. I'll uh, I'll put it in my calendar to sounds good in, in two weeks time. Thank you very much. That is very um, inspiring and very enlightening for me. Um, yeah, I hope you have uh, an awesome day in Arizona. Uh, and uh, yeah, so keep uh, keep growing, keep evolving. I will do that. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. It's, a, it's a, my pleasure. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.